Let me know if this sounds familiar. You're playing a game and all of a sudden you hear the dreaded USB disconnected noise. Or maybe you're a VR user like me and you got full body tracking like me. And all of a sudden your character just spazzes out completely and you look and you see that none of your vibe trackers are connected anymore somehow. Maybe you got a custom keyboard and you plug it in and then the lights just go dimmer and dimmer and dimmer until they eventually shut off. Well, congratulations, you are now a power <laughs> user. Let me explain. Hello and welcome. My name is Wolfie and you are watching Greater Than Pi. So, USB, how does it work? Is it magic? No. Universal serial buses or USB devices are the most common device that you will use when it comes to a computer. And that's by design. They're actually designed to be super easy to use and super easy to plug in. Although many of us who have tried to plug in things into the back of the computer might disagree with that. USB is ubiquitous to pretty much all personal computers, including Macs and the likes of Linux as well. But that comes with its own set of challenges. You see, the thing about USB is it should never ever be capable of being overloaded. And in a vacuum, a single USB port will never be the problem because devices are honestly designed with the intent that they are capable of running at their maximum bandwidth with the maximum bandwidth of a single port. The problem, comes in how USB actually communicates to your processor. On all motherboards, there is something called an IO die, which is a controller that connects all of the IO to the CPU. That's actually usually located in the bottom corner of your motherboard. That being said, that IO die has multiple little configurations within it and is actually separate than your chipset. Your chipset is usually rated to a specific number of USB ports, SATA ports, PCIe lanes, etc. Companies like Asus, MSI, Gigabyte, ASRock can actually add more in by adding additional USB buses. The problem with that though is not all buses are created equal and even worse, sometimes companies don't properly allocate the right number of USB ports to the right number of buses. The general rule of thumb is that four USB ports can connect to a single bus properly. But in some cases, this can actually be exceeded relatively easily. In fact, a pretty normal example is streaming. While streaming, you usually have a webcam or a cam link, a capture card for whatever game you're playing or a console you're playing. You'll usually have some sort of a microphone interface. So this will be either what I have like a Go, Go XLR or a straight up USB microphone. You might have USB headphones that are wireless. Most likely if you're on the Elgato system, you probably have a stream deck as well. All of these things, in addition to your mice and keyboard, use up USB bandwidth. And while a couple of these on a single USB bus is not a problem, when you add all of them into the same bus, you're likely to actually bottleneck and actually crash it directly. Windows actually has an automatic feature to recover from USB crashes. Before that, it would just blue screen and just completely destroy everything. But uh, luckily now there is a procedure in which it disconnects the devices and reconnects them in order of priority. That being said, they don't always completely reconnect and some of them may drop out as well. Again, it's part of the security feature. Now you gotta restart your PC, which not great for a stream and most definitely is not convenient for you. So then the question becomes, how do you fix it? Well, there's a couple of answers. There's the free answer, and then there's the one that I have found works the most, and I use this one a lot, actually. So the first one is move your ports around. Most likely your motherboard, if it's a bit more expensive, has more than one USB bus. Mine are actually conveniently labeled in the back of the motherboard, but uh, they're not always labeled. Try your front ports if you are having issues with your back ports. Uh, usually those are on a separate bus. If you have USB-C, that USB-C port is usually on its own controller, 100% separate from everything else I've found, which is convenient, but also inconvenient because you also have to break out USB-C. But if you have the ports and you have the ability to move things around, you can move low bandwidth things onto the same bus and just kind of like move things around. As I said, in a vacuum, you should never be able to exceed the single bandwidth of a single port. But there are other issues <laughs> that aren't solved by this. One of them are power limits, because guess what? The same thing that provides the power through the IO to everything 
those are all connected, unfortunately. Now, over drawing from a USB port luckily won't damage your components due to the fact that doing so will trigger the USB's own protections way, way, way before you have an issue on the motherboard. Now, overdrawing from the USB ports though is, it's not a common thing. In fact, I only recently discovered it was a problem when I did it myself. I had RGB headphones, RGB headphone stand, an RGB charging pad for my phone, an RGB bungee cord, an RGB mouse pad, RGB keyboard, RGB mouse, all plugged into the same USB bus and I didn't even realize it. Moving them around might help, especially if you move something to the front ports, but I ended up having issues across the board no matter what port I ended up putting it in, which is where the second solution comes in, add-in cards. Now, not all add-in cards are created equal. In fact, actually, if you see one with like eight ports on it, I would avoid that. The reason being is that most likely will have the same problems if you use all of the ports as your normal motherboard. Now, what I actually recommend is something like the one that I have here. This is a single four port card and you'll actually notice that there are literally caps on every single one of these ports. That is for individual power delivery and individual control. Also, this works with capture cards as well. PCIe is just a higher bandwidth than USB ever could be. Like my personal recommendation when people say, hey, I wanna get into streaming is not a USB capture card. I tell them to go straight for like the Elgato HD60 Pro because in every single case that I've ever owned a capture card, the PCIe ones give you the least problems and avoid this issue the most. But if you do have to use high bandwidth USB parts, this is the way to go, honestly. Like something like this, it's super cheap. I think I paid less than $20 for it. It takes like a couple minutes to install it in your PC. And when it's installed into your PC, mine just Windows found the drivers for it and it's good to go, like no effort. And now I don't have USB problems. And that is how I fix most of my USB problems is just add in cards. I hope this was helpful for you. Um, and honestly, if you are struggling with USB issues on a laptop, uh, I'm sorry, there's really not much you can do for those because at that point you're probably using lots and lots of like uh, USB dongles. Yeah, for those situations for laptops, actually, I uh, would recommend getting a powered hub. Most of the time that will fix your problems. But that's where we're gonna wrap up today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video, please give it a like, comment, subscribe, and uh, if this helped you, let me know in the comments below. But that's where I'm gonna end it today, so thank you again. Wolfie, out.